It is good to see so many people gathered here this morning for his prayer. I wish to offer my congratulations to all of you for completing the month of Ramadan, for your dedication to your faith. You have my deepest respect and admiration. I know this has been a time of self-reflection, charitable giving, and peacemaking. I have had the opportunity to learn about the Islamic faith from many dear friends, many of whom are here today. I want to thank them for teaching me about the fundamental tenets of the Islamic faith, tenets which include peace, prosperity, charity, and compassion. They have also counseled me in the five pillars of Islam, faith, prayer, charity, fasting, and pilgrimage. While working for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department shortly after September 11, 2001, I was put in charge of the Office of Homeland Security. I was charged to work on our new mission of counterterrorism. As many of you know, some Americans were harassing other Americans, Muslim and Sikh Americans, based on their appearance. The Muslim and Sikh community came to Sheriff Lee and offered to work together to educate the public on the various religions to establish an interfaith council, the Muslim American Homeland Security Council, and to work side by side against terrorism and violence, and for respect of all people and their religion. Through that process, I learned a great deal. I worked with Muslims, Sikhs, Jews, and Christians, and found that all of us had more in common concerning our beliefs than we had different beliefs. In 2004, I had the tremendous opportunity to travel as part of a delegation to Pakistan with members of the Pakistan American community. The State Department warned us not to go and were quite upset when we went anyway. We visited Islamabad, Lahore, where I had the opportunity to see the sun and the kites, the shower and the tiger pass. We were invited into many homes and enjoyed the great food and even greater hospitality of the Pakistani people. I will never forget the friends I made in Pakistan and I hope to be able to travel there again soon. I retired from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department after a 30-year career. I was retired for one year when I applied for the position of the Orange County Sheriff. I have served as your sheriff for the past 15 months and hope to have your support when I run for office in June of next year. As a law enforcement officer, I have never forgotten that you have given your permission to me and my deputies to protect you. With that permission comes a lot of trust, a trust that I will not violate. Without that permission and trust, I could not do my job. It is my duty to apply the law with fairness and impartiality, and to protect the great freedom we all enjoy in America. They call us the peacekeepers. That is the true definition of a law enforcement officer, to keep the peace, whether it is a domestic dispute, a disagreement between neighbors, or a clash between demonstrators. We must put our personal feelings and beliefs aside and rightfully protect and defend the constitutional rights and freedoms of all people we serve. 
We don't do this in conflict with the community, but in partnership with the community. Well, many law enforcement agencies in California have their own core values or mission statement, the state peace office standards and training commission has published a code of ethics for all law enforcement in the state of California. It reads in part, as a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve mankind, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all men to liberty, equality, and justice. If you think about it, there are many parallels in the Islamic faith with this code of ethics particularly the duty to protect the innocent and the weak and to respect all men and their right to liberty, equality, and justice. Following the 911 terrorist attacks in this country, groups of American citizens were being targeted as following statements. Those who feel like they can intimidate our fellow citizens to take out your anger don't represent the best of America. They represent the worst of humankind, and they should be ashamed of that kind of behavior. He also reminded people that these acts of violence against innocents violate the fundamental tenets of the Islamic faith, and it's important for my fellow Americans to understand that the face of terror is not the true faith of Islam. Those individuals who stereotype would do well to hear the following passage by the Prophet Muhammad. Do not be people without minds of your own, saying that if others treat you well, you will treat them well and that if they do wrong, you will do wrong. Rather, accustom yourself to do good if people do good, and not to do wrong if they do evil. Law enforcement and the Sikh, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish communities, to name a few, banded together to stand against terrorism and to stand against religious and cultural bias. The peacekeeper can never accomplish their job alone, but with the permission and with the counsel of all the communities we serve, we do this in concert with one another and learn about what unites us as opposed to what divides us. America was born out of the search for freedom of religion. The first colonists in the 1600s wanted an opportunity to worship freely and choose which religion they wanted to take part in. We live in the best country in the world where people from all faiths are free to practice their religion. The United States has welcomed immigrants from all over the world to live here as law-abiding citizens. We live in harmony with people of all faiths who unite themselves as Americans. In closing, I would like to quote the writer Cahill Sabran, who said, I love you when you bow in your mind. Kneel in your temple, pray in your church. For you and I are sons of one religion, and it is the Spirit. E. Mubarak. Thank you.